two atoms, they're both going to be attracted to one another. And where does that attraction come from? It's the electrons of one atom being attracted to the protons of another. And so that's going to pull atoms together. But if they get too close to one another, then there's going to be repulsion. And we can measure these forces just using an energy distance graph, where we've got the energy that's pulling those or pushing those apart, and then how far they are physically separated. And using a graph like that, we're able to determine the bond energy, the energy holding them together and also measure the bond length, how far those atoms are going to be apart. And so the bond energy, if we were to define it, is simply the energy required to break those atoms apart. Now likewise, when we form a bond between the two, we're going to release energy, and that's just simply the negative bond energy. Now the strength of that bond, or the bond strength, is going to be built upon the charges of the atoms themselves. The bigger the charges are, the greater that bond energy is going to be. And as we increase the number of electrons in a bond. So as we move from a single to a double to a triple bond, we're actually increasing the charges and therefore increasing that bond strength. And one interesting thing that you should know is that as we increase that strength, we're going to pull those atoms together and we're going to actually decrease the bond length. And so if we look at these two representative atoms right here, as we bring them close together, there's going to be attraction. In other words, as we shorten the distance between the atoms, as they get closer and closer together, there's going to be a greater attractive force. Now, as they start to get really close together, there's actually going to be repulsion between those two atoms that's going to push them apart. And so we can find what's called that Goldilocks, the point where they're not too close, not too far away, and we're going to have the highest amount of energy right here. And they're just going to kind of vibrate at that space. So if we were to look at two atoms, like two atoms of hydrogen, we would find that that energy to distance graph would look something like this. There's going to be attractive force between these two hydrogen atoms out here, but as we bring them closer and closer together, that energy of attraction is going to get greater. As we move them even closer, then we're going to move into this whole idea of repulsion. And so this is going to be that Goldilocks area right here. And so what we can measure then is the bond energy, the energy holding those atoms together. And likewise, since we've got distance here on the x-axis, we can measure the bond length, how far those atoms are apart. And so if we define what is bond energy, it's just two atoms connected together. And so bond energy is the energy absorbed when we break those atoms apart. Now likewise, there's going to be energy that's released as we bond those together, and that's going to be the negative bond energy. It's going to be exactly the same. The amount of energy to break it apart is the same amount of energy that we get when those two atoms are going to be attracted together. Now what contributes to that bond energy? It's going to be the electronegativity of all the atoms uh, involved in that molecule. And so let's say we were to look at boron. Boron is going to have an atomic radius of 83 picometers. What does that mean? The distance from the center of that nucleus to the outside is going to be 83 picometers. And so if we were to connect a boron to a boron, we would anticipate that that bond length, the distance between the two atoms, is going to be twice that. It's going to be 166 picometers. But if we were to measure the actual bond length in a molecule, let's throw one up here, and it ends up being 175 picometers. In other words, they're farther apart than we would expect, that means that we're going to have a very weak bond between these two atoms. And so basically, as we increase that bond length, that distance between the atoms, we're decreasing the bond strength. Now, if we were to use another example, let's say we're looking at rhenium, which has a radius of 137.5. If we had two rhenium atoms, we would expect that that bond length is going to be 275 picometers. If we actually measure it in a molecule like this, and it's less than that, that means that they're really overlapping. There's greater charges holding it together, and so we would call that a strong bond. Again, the, the, the higher your bond energy is, the closer those atoms are going to be, and the shorter that bond length is going to be. Now, what happens as we increase the bond number? Let's say we're looking at, looking at two molecules that look essentially the same. We've got ethane, which is carbon attached to carbon, and then hydrogen around the outside, and then acetylene. And so this is the same thing, carbon attached to carbon with hydrogen around the outside, but in this case we've got a triple bond right here. How is that going to affect the bond strength and the bond length? And so if we look at these two carbons, 
We've got one that's a single bond and one that's a triple bond. If we were to measure their bond length, we would find that as we increase the number of bonds, we're actually decreasing that bond length. They're getting closer and closer together. Well, what does that tell us about the bond energy? The bond energy is increasing over time. So again, the more electrons that we're sharing, the more charges there are, the greater that bond energy, and therefore the shorter the bond length is. If we were to measure the same thing with nitrogen, single, double, triple bond, we'd find that we're decreasing the bond length again. So what's going to happen to our bond energy over here? It's going to increase over time. And so did you learn to describe the energies involved in both breaking and forming chemical bonds? I hope so.